I just want to say, it's especially these last few days, I've been very humbled by everyone approaching me uh, about stuff, and I'm greatly appreciative of it. Um, I am I am just a man. I am just, just a guy. I'm always willing. <laughs> feel free to chat with me, any questions and such. So this first thing that we are doing, and I'm going to talk while you're doing this. This is your assignment here. There's something I want you to do for me. You need to write 10 things in your life that, that you feel are the most important to you in no particular order. Don't worry about number one, two, three, four. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just 10 things, 10 concepts, all right? You don't need to share it. Keep it to yourself. Or if you want to share it, that's fine. That's just your choice. Some people don't feel comfortable about it, whether it's family, whether it's music, whether it's the desire to learn, uh, pumpkin spice lattes, um, uh, proletarianism, whatever the case is. <laughs> Thank you, Siri. Uh, whatever the case is, just 10 things total. What you feel are the most important things for your life. And some of you guys are like really thinking like, oh, I got a few, and I'm like, oh, what else? Well, I guess I do like hot dogs. <laughs> hey, cooking can be one. I love cooking. As you guys are doing that, I'm gonna just talk a little bit about me. Uh, so I was born in Michigan. This is the area around South Bend, Indiana, which is Notre Dame. No, I don't care about Notre Dame. When you're getting it shoved down your throat all your life, it's kind of nice to have a breath of fresh air not having to. Um, I graduated from Western Michigan University with a bachelor's in K-12 music, focusing on instrumental. Uh, especially when I first came here, I had to teach choir suddenly, but I learned a lot. I had a great education experience. Um, I studied with Dr. David Montgomery, Dr. John Leishner, and Andrew Rathbun on saxophone. For those that like jazz, he's a really good modern jazz composer. Um, highly recommend. I worked with homeschool partnerships in, in Three Rivers uh, schools. I moved to Montana because I had a friend that moved out here. And it was actually very different, very big calling for me to come out here. I don't miss Michigan. Love here in Montana. I, oh, I love it. Um, I met my wife in Montana. We are new parents. I didn't think I'd be the guy that has a bunch of baby pictures on my phone and it's three gigs and counting because my wife just sent me one this morning that's, oh, it made me cry. <laughs> um, I'm a super geek. Uh, some of you guys have seen from the title, even if you did my last one. I am obsessed with any geek culture. I love all of that. I still play video games. I use it to poke fun with my students. I know what sus is. <laughs> he knows what venting is, Mr. Bonds the imposter. <laughs> The last thing is, is GAD, it's an anxiety disorder. Um, it does affect my life. Uh, best way I can say is I'm Piglet from Winnie the, Poo, Winnie the Pooh. It's not one thing I'm scared of, it's everything at all times and all at once. Um, I'm not saying this as don't take pity on me, don't say that, oh, I can't do this. This is just something I've had to manage and learn in my life. Um, and though those of you that might have, like, I feel like I've got something. I promise you, you can go through it, and if you need techniques, I actually have very specific things that work for me and a couple of my friends. I've got autism friends and my fa um, friends of family, and I've got friends that are, have ADHD, I've got friends with ADD, and I have no tricks. Trust me. So, hopefully by this, all my ramblings here, you've got 10, or close to it. One last thing in those 10. What I want you to do is Get your like top three. Now again, not in order. Circle the three from there that you think out of all those 10, those are the ones I need to focus on. Those are the three that matter the most. Those are the three that I would go to war about. Those are the three that, you know, they say, what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> what would you do for that? Some people, because I can see some eyes thinking on this, I want to give some, a little bit of time in the process. Even if you don't have that list of 10, like think of maybe things will pop up as I'm talking. Absolutely. Or you might realize, actually, that circle might have changed. That's fine. Do you feel those three get the attention they deserve in your current life? From yourself? From your friends? From your administration? And that's something important. As we're going through this, one of the things that I'm gonna talk about is how we see the world. So here's a pop quiz. What year in the future were the Jetsons from? Does anybody know what year? There are two possible answers. And I say this, like think about it. And I'll give, let's say, we'll take some guesses for like decade time-wise, okay? So let's say like, for example, we know they're not from the 60s. So like, I'll say something like along those lines. Raise your hand if you think the 2000s, 2010s, 2020 
2030s, 2040s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. I think I got it pretty much everybody. Well, uh, there's a, there's a, first off, Adult Swim cartoons, hilarious. I like, I watch them, they're goofy. But they actually make a joke about this in one of the things, so I kind of took the comic. You guys from Florida? No, we're from the future. Yeah, the 21st century, the magnificent far off year of 2002. And then he looks at the calendar and it's 2004. Two answers on this, because that's when the show ended was 2002. But the other year that is brought up, and it's only brought up one other time, believe it or not, is 2062. But anyways, it's kind of a fun trivia. But think about what the Jetsons were. The ideas, this grandiose, like, whoa, we've got flying cars. We've got these robots that do stuff. Now we've got robots that are doing all of our stuff. <laughs> but what's different about the mindset? When you think about the world in the future back then, that's what they thought the future was. How about right now? If you think of the future, we'll all have different mindsets on this. But does anybody think of something positive? Oh, that's a hard fight, and a lot of people don't. All right, if you do, kudos to you. All right, it's taken me a long time to feel that same way. But why is that? What is the case for this? Mindsets have changed. One of the things that I'm, yes, I'm a young guy, but Cold War, this fear of absolute apocalypse, and this idea also of globalization, we're bringing everything together. Suddenly, what's something that's a world issue is suddenly my issue, right? I am horribly devastated by the wars going on, and there's, but there's only so much I can do. But the way that's being brought to my attention is it is my problem, and I, physically me, need to do something. But what can I do? Really, not much. But that brings us down. Politics. I mentioned politics. It's good versus evil. We have less dis debate or good versus evil mindset, all right? We're only focused on problems, and I can tell you this, I love to hear good, healthy debate. I hate mudslinging. I almost threw my TV remote at my TV within three minutes of any debate because of how much it's changed. This idea of frustration, anger, did you know? In all of this, they're closer to solving cancer than they ever before, to the point where they can actually eliminate some forms of cancer. That's awesome! Why doesn't everybody know about that? What's well, boring? It's lame. That doesn't sell anything. Good news, we want to know the negative. Dr. Tim has stolen a lot of my contests. <laughs> <laughs> Happiness is good, but gossip and fear is tasty. Right? We turn what we might think of, so thinking of Jetsons, this hope, an idea of, yeah, it's turned into, that doesn't sell. That, that idea of cool, we know that, that Cold War idea, this goes farther back too, I understand, even Great Depression, fear of starving. The one difference we have is the magical power of the internet. People can mask themselves, be close to each other. You could be chastised on the internet and it's actually some like third grader somewhere that's just trolling on a forum. <laughs> but seriously. Good. You can masquerade as anyone you want. As humans, we tend to gravitate towards the negative because it's fun. And it's easier to complain and worry than seek solutions. It's easier to say, I hate that. Well, I mean, honestly, we can all say that, right? This goes deeper, though, into also your students. This goes into the, what they're dealing with, too. More work, but less pay. More households have students. Well, actually, I should say this. The teachers never get paid well joke is getting old. It's been constant. I remember actually watching, I love game shows, watched a game show like it was an older one, and they're laughing, oh, teachers don't get paid much. Oh, oh, oh. Why is that still there? It seems kind of odd, right? Why is that there still? Many homes have parents working constantly or have multiple jobs, making it so that the students are having less parental involvement at home, and they're being raised by whoever on the internet's fancy enough. Whoever on the internet gives them that short-term gratification. A general rise in enjoyment of darker humors. This also is from the internet. Raise your hand if you enjoy dark humor. I've got plenty of stuff. Raise your hand if you know you've got students that enjoy dark humor. Raise your hand if it's hard to tell some days whether it's real or not. I've yet to find, and this is just something from this, I still haven't found a psychologist that's answered that question for me. How do I know? I know my students really well, and they know they can talk to me about stuff. But man, that is close. 
that's close to home. Between movies, TV shows, popular culture, it's fun to joke about dark feelings, but it's an easy mask if the seriousness happens. Even in religious context, you might think, you know what? Jesus be coming because that's the only thing that's going to save this. That's about the complete annihilation of the world. <clears throat> that's not happy for everybody. That's still a negative concept for a lot. All right, and I'm very much of faith. I'm saying that it's just a realization, okay? Not everyone's going to be happy to that. The whole point of this, guys, is why does this matter? With all of this growth of this, I can tell you for one, in my, at least my generation growing up, they said, what's the point of having a goal for your life because the world's going to end? Because of this, because of this, Y2K. I remember that being a big thing. I had no idea. I was, you know, I was a kid. But being pushed down even further beyond when your whole culture is around it, all right? I'm not saying that this idea has been as new. It's just getting bigger. But one of the biggest things that you need to remind yourself is, why are you here? What's your aspiration in your life? And that's what I'm talking about today. Mental health focus is good. Yes, it is. But that's not what I'm talking about here. All right? Uh, mental health, like it focuses on your situation and maintenance of your well mental well-being. Momentary needs. Very important to do. And Yeah, do it. I'm not ignoring that. It prevents, helps prevent symptoms of burnout. All right? Breathing, meditation, exercise, mind puzzles. Anything gets you off your normal thought pattern. That is fantastic stuff, and I will touch on it for just a moment. But that's not what I'm here for. That's not what I'm trying to help you out mostly. Because the thing is, is that's like cutting off a dandelion head. The dandelion head's gonna grow back, right? And we need to watch our gardens. We need to re weed them. But what I'm talking about is pulling up the root. The aspiration goals, the purpose of your life. This concept, why are you here? Not this building, this planet. That level of why you are here. Okay? Longer term goals that may not have instant gratification but are achievable. I want to travel. Who doesn't? How are you going to get there? Oh, wait a second. That's a vague goal that doesn't have specific direction. That's something I'm talking about here. If a mental health exercises are a band-aid, then these aspirations are the wound that needs to heal. All right, mental health can help it heal. All right, but you need to make sure you've taken that to, well, if you need, to a doctor, or know how to get it properly fixed. Without these things in mind, you might feel like life is drifting. You don't have an end goal. It's like you're driving in a car and you're just going. I mean, that's Montana driving, let's be honest. Especially near the High Line. You just keep going and going. Yeah. Town! Going. 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 Cow! Going. Going. It's what it is. <laughs> is that your life, though? Going. Going. Party! Going. Going. Birthday! Going. 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 And this turns into your students, too. Everything you do, everything you feel, falls to your students as well. One of the things say, oh, so you're talking about work-life balance. No. Here's the thing about work-life balance, and I've heard a lot of people use this phrase. Thing is, is when you use work-life balance, we say, oh, yeah, I'm balancing work. And then they're constantly on their phones answering emails at 10 p.m. at night. Yeah, I've got work-life balance. And even when they're relaxing, they're writing music for their kids. Yeah, I've got work-life balance. Do you know anything besides music? It often just slams on work, whether we think it or not. It accidentally happens. We're in a passionate field. We love helping out these kids. But it's okay to not be always a music teacher. I'm Mr. Bond, but I'm also TJ. I'm Mr. Bond, but I'm also the 40-second power in every like, thing I do for online gaming. I'm Mr. Bond, but I'm also TJ, who's helped people get out of depression. I am me. The thing is, is that your aspiration for life will always matter more. Period. What you want out of life is what matters. Not your job. Not what anyone else wants you to do. You. I mentioned this before my first uh, presentation about saying, be you. I wasted so many of my years trying to be someone I wasn't. Be you and honor that. 
My focus for you is to focus on thriving, not surviving. There will be days you need to survive, absolutely. But thrive, find ways to thrive. So how do you get there? Well, first off, the main, main, main boundaries are omni-important, omni, all. No other thing is more important for your work and your life. You need to have these boundaries. Whatever your focus in life is, you need to defend that with sword and shield. All right, some responses will require you to say, no, you're not allowed to do this. I have facts, I've got data, I've got A, Y, X, Y, Z, elemental P. I've got everything here. Sometimes you just say no and just let it be there, shield. My mom is super patient. My dad is super passionate. I have a sword from my dad, a shield from my mom. And tell you, they, they fight in my head all the time. <laughs> so it's okay too if you're not sure. That's where talking to others helps. You are not being a jerk if you set strict boundaries. You matter in saying, I'm trying to take care of myself. I, this is what I need. Every person is selfish to their own desires in life. With that, understand that if you don't speak for yourself, someone's gonna speak for you and you may not like it. This isn't being rude, okay? This isn't them saying, oh my gosh, you're being such a jerk. No, and they're not gonna see it that way. It's just a matter of if you don't say anything, they're gonna put words in your mouth. They're gonna put words in your head. They're gonna put words about you in other people's heads. Just be clear, all right? It's not out of rudeness because one of these, a lot of these mistakes happen because people just don't talk to each other. We just accidentally miscommunicate, all right? Living for others is not a sustainable life goal. Raise your hand if you think, if you get joy out of seeing the success of others. And guess what, that's music, right? That's what we're here for, teaching. Actually, I would say that goes into teaching as a whole. That is fantastic, but it's not sustainable, all right? People pleasing is a common trait that we often share as music teachers and can lead to some joy, but you will burn out so much faster and often feel like others aren't matching that same expectations you give to others. You care so much, you give so much. Raise your hand if you feel like no one else gives as much as you do in your community. You're not alone, yeah. It's draining, so draining. The candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long. Think of the longer goal. This is, teaching is not a game of who gets there first. It's about stamina and building those successes, building up your students, building yourself up, and taking things with that mindset. So, how do you talk, how does your administration know about these boundaries? How do you talk to them about this? The two most important aspects of any relationship are trust and communication. It is how I've lived my entire life. It's how my family's lived my whole life. And both Scott and Tim stole it from me. How dare they? I was, I was happy and upset at the same time when they talked about how important those two aspects of life are because I was gonna say them first. <laughs> but they are, and it really is. They are the most important things. If either of those aspects of any sort of relationship, whether it be love, uh, friendship, business, they will crumble. If you don't have trust, well, I think that's been shown pretty clear with different aspects in the conference already. If you don't have communication, well, they're gonna assume. You know what they say about assuming? It makes us all look like idiots. My, my students hate me when I say that because they know I'm not gonna curse. <laughs> be blunt and clear about what you need to live. Try to be crystal clear, no vagueness. All right, don't say, well, I like to spend time with family. Okay, what does that look like? Be specific. Talk about the expectations the administration has for your role. Raise your hand if you think your admin doesn't have a clue of what you really do. I see a lot of veterans, you some, some small hands up. Yeah, they might not. And kudos to the ad admin that do, because they care. Or maybe they try to know so that they can figure out ways to torture you. <sighs> but it's true. The thing is, is that if they expect you to know them, that means you can share what they, what they look like. If they disagree, so let's say, hey, you know what? This is what I'm seeing my expectations to be. And a lot of admins say, yep, 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 you're doing your job. Yep, you're doing your job, you're doing your job. They say, oh, wait, 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 no, no, I don't like that. Okay, can we set something clear, written down, as you sign contracts, written down, so this is absolutely clear. This is the expectation, all right? How you feel about your life and students. Here's something that might help you, especially when 
Students are used as weapons. All of this affects what's called your hidden curriculum. If you haven't, if you remember that from theory or uh, philosophies of teaching. Your hidden curriculum, it is what you accidentally teach as you teach. My hope that as I teach, I teach my music, I'm teaching good morals to my students. Um, a math teacher might accidentally teach their love for comic books as they teach. I know that because I had a seventh grade teacher that was that obsessed with Spider-Man. It's, yeah, it's what you teach. If you are miserable about life in the world, it accidentally goes to your students too. Your frustrations, boop, everything. You are what you eat. I eat a lot of good things. That's why I'm very successful. <laughs> but you really are. It's what it is. And it's true about your mind. What do you do when you get home? Do you go on the news and go, oh my gosh, I'm so ticked off? Do you angrily write an email to a parent of a student that's just not doing anything? And you know the parent's not going to do anything, but you're going to write that email. They're going to respond. Well, is that healthy? Oh, heck no. Focusing on a thriving mindset will trickle into your students. So if your admin knows, hey, I'm trying to focus on getting my life and really focusing it so that I may lead my students to the best of my ability. This thriving, they see it. The kids see the energy you put out and they're gonna wanna do it. The kids know that I'm jumpy and bouncy, but they also know I've got bad days. And I'll be very open and honest with them. I was like, ah, sorry guys, not feeling it. And I've even said before, guys, I'm not trying to yell. I'm not trying to, I'm really trying, I'm having a hard day. We need to be focusing better. And believe it or not, students usually are gonna go like, oh, he's having a bad day, let's get him. For the most part, if students, especially in the music room, if they're with you, yeah, they'll understand. And a lot of times it helps, but don't expect that to be your only thing, right? Just be aware. They, they'll be aware. It's the human aspect of it all. Make a meeting about this. Talk with your admin. Make it a big deal. All right? But make it so that it's casual. Get coffee. If you're in a small town especially, you probably have some either restaurant, coffee place, what have you. Make the setting so comfortable that it's not, you're not trying to be threatening about this. Because keep in mind, they might see this. Oh, you're having concerns about your job. Oh dear, we're gonna have to think about firing, we're gonna have to think about like, you know, all this and that. No, 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 take a step back. Set the stage so you're saying, I just want to chat. The other thing is, is this is a way to connect with your admin. They get to know you as the person. Be the one that helps set the schedule. Be the one that sets it, hey, reminding, hey, you're gonna be there? Hey, you're gonna be there? The thing is, is that it shows them, oh, this is very important to you. This is that important to you, so I need to make it more of a priority in my mind because I need to help this teacher. This is my job. Unfortunately, there are admin, though, that don't do that. Let's be honest, I've seen some. I, that was my first year. Don't be insubordinate. And that's why I'm getting into the negative side because there are admin that don't support. Don't be insubordinate. But there are issues that are worth to continue the fight if the admin is being aggressive or saying no. Reach out to other teachers for suggestions. Every single person in this room is a good example. Uh, if you stick around for the mentorship, yeah, email me. I can tell you I've had some weird things. Like I've said on uh, Wednesday, I guarantee you'll not have as bad of a sub, sub experience as I had one of my first times because the kid pulled a gun. <gasps> and as you've heard me talk, this has not really been much different than I've changed. But the kid had a lot of stuff going on in their life. I was too terrified to even say anything. It's only been until recently I've been able to actually really say anything because I realize that that might be something that's worth saying. It's okay because the worst is very rare to happen, but it can happen just on that. All right, there might be some general expe expectations that you may not have considered. So this is for those especially new teachers. I'm not saying go march to the senses, destroy the school building, anarchy for all except for music. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is be aware, especially this first year, there just might be some stuff that you are not aware of. So be give and take on this. Say like, oh, okay, this is the expectation for this job, okay. But make sure it's clear, because sometimes say it's fuzzy. No, make it crystal clear. Uh, they recently updated some of the wording in, in our contracts and I made it extraordinarily crystal clear and I relisted everything. They didn't even have to like say, oh, well, because they went through every single department they were like, oh, they had to do this, 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 this. They got to mine, check on because I made it crystal clear took out the vagueness no vague this is exactly what my job entails if being civil is not working let's be honest that is a possibility too all right reach out and write into the school board head about concerns 
follow everything that your school has in place to the letter. All right, this shows I am trying to be professional about this. But in the end, emotions sometimes take the best still too. That's where you get the community involved. All right, Facebook, Twitter, powerful tools. As we've seen people's celebrity lives get destroyed by them. If you're in a small town especially, it can destroy those too. I'm not saying that uses a weapon, but sometimes as a last absolute resort, your community can come up and back you up. Your time has value and your pay should reflect that. Meaning, oh, you should be doing this for free. Why? The soccer coach over there doesn't have to do it for free. The athletic coach, great session just before this talking about festival, the MHSA handbook says I don't do it for free, that we're expected to do this, that we are supposed to do this. Bringing up rules, again, this is at the hostile level. But the thing is, this is where they'll say, don't you care about the kids? Don't you care about your students? Well, yeah, I do. Actually, I care so immensely that if I'm not in the right mindset, how can I lead them correctly? How can I model my hidden curriculum to them correctly? How can I model what it takes to be a good person, a good musician, a true renaissance person, especially at a small school, because you've got tons, they're doing everything. But music is one of those aspects of the renaissance, I say person, let's be honest, men and women, yes, not just men. Early in your career, you might need to use more of your after school time to get your things situated. This gets easier with time as veteran teachers, I assure, will probably tell you. Your first year, or maybe two, for me it was two, it was horrible pain I had to go through. But because I was able to say, okay, this is the expectation, this is what's going on, this is what we're doing, all right. I can now manage my time better because I know what exactly what I need to do. So your first year, you might still have a little off on the side of your plate that you're gonna have to do but it gets a lot easier. How You need to reach to your community. Your community needs to know about you. They need to be aware of every single person in the community. So I posted on Facebook, uh, oh, I can't remember when, but I posted something about, oh, my wife and I are have some, having some just like really tough life thoughts. A lot of it was just me being, us being frustrated with insurance. I had about 10 people contact my pastor, scared to death that I was moving. <laughs> That's the level of how much the community knows. They know my name personally. They know my life personally. I'm also an open book. I really don't have any secrets. You know, come up to me. Yes, I was warned in a small town. They're gonna know everything. They're gonna know I like sci-fi. <laughs> how do they know that you're passionate? This is where those of you, and myself included, I was, I'm very much, I think I said something, but I actually didn't. I think I did something, but I actually didn't. Actions will speak louder to a lot of folks, all right? Do something, reach out, all right? It also showcases your needs. You can say like, ah, oh, man, I'm just frustrated. I'm getting busy with uh, loan payments. I've got some, you know, my son is constantly yelling at night. Oh, what do I do? My son doesn't want to play saxophone. <laughs> the thing is, is that they, they'll see this and see you as a person, not just a teacher. They see you as a human and realize there's a human teaching those kids. And that's okay. You need to make that human happy. Be a part of an organization that involves parents, whether it be Rotary, Boosters, something, churches. Be a part of the community in a way that helps you be a part of them. This also helps. You don't have to convince us hard because they see you natural in your natural environment. They're not going with you know, National Geographic. And there we see the wild music teacher rocking in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what goes on in his eyes, but we do know there's sadness in his heart. We don't see, they see, oh, no, they're having a hard day. Like, what can I do to help? People are more willing to do that than you might think, and especially if you reach out. Build relationships with folks. I'm not saying you need to date everyone. It's not The Sims. <laughs> I'm saying reach out to folks. Connect with folks. This is also, if you are somebody who's like, maybe I might start in a small school, but my goal is to be in a bigger school. That's fine. By connecting with them, it shows I care about your students. They're not stepping stones to me. And I may not stay here forever, but I, I promise you, I care about them. That mindset, you won't be able to stop some people, but it will stop a lot of folks from being worried about their students. These are small seeds that you sprout in these, in these relationships. But what happens is, like I said earlier, getting the community involved against administration, 
Parents can become vines that wrap around your program and shield it. Because they'll step up and say, excuse me, yeah, Mr. Bonson is going to play saxophone and you're going to like it. <laughs> I'm just saying that. I am a saxophone player, but I'm okay with all the jokes. I love them. Just like plants, though, it takes nurturing, focus, and attention. This is where that side, like, oh, I've not got free time. Call them. Just say, hey, how's it going? I, every single parent that comes up to me and just says hi to me, I always tell them how their student's doing. Oh, little Jimmy over there is great. We finally got him to play F and B flat on tuba. He's finally playing two notes. I know it's great for a senior, but. <laughs> Pep Band is a great place to bond with students and your community. Apparently, I have become famous in my district as the dancing saxophone man because I would just go out in front and dance. How many of you love playing Pep Band? How many of you are like, I'd rather be doing concert music because we got to get ready for festival? Oh, no, no, no. I can see the veteran teachers. I know you're nervous on this because you, the college <laughs> folks especially, you'll get there. The thing is, is that pep band's a great community outreach where you don't have to try. They're just there. They're seeing you care. They're seeing you do stuff. And I promise you, as long as you're playing, you know, whatever song it is, decently, they can hear the melody, and there's a cool drum going on, they don't care. <laughs> they will think you were the best thing since sliced bologna. <laughs> be goofy. Be intense. I have danced with my saxophone a ton. I have, um, I'm not afraid to look like the idiot. I'm, I'm always just goofy with them, but they physically see that at these sporting events. The coaches see that too. We had an issue where there was a, like, well, they want the pep band to go, but they're gonna take it out of my account. But the coaches saw how much passion I brought. They found a way to help out from the sports account. Because of that connection, that relationship, the community wants me there, the community wants them there. I wanna be there, I wanna help support my students. Most of, some of the students are my band students that are out there on the court. I wanna support them because I know how much it means to them. They see that. They like that, they like music. I had a, I've got kids that are in music simply because of they like me, and they know that I'm there for them. Unfortunately, some of them, I might be the closest thing to a dad that they've got. I take that role seriously. That's part of my Hayden curriculum I've gotta be aware of. Students will get that. In the end though, all of this is about wording and phrasing, how you talk to people, how you word things. If I say, get to letter A and start again, Flutes, I'm gonna hit you. You play that A natural. <laughs> say flat, A flat. Versus saying, flutes, come on. We're better than this. A flat, right? What is it? One, two, three, one, two, three, pinky. You got it. Let's go. Being aware of that, saying how you speak. I uh, took sign language when I was in college and I loved it. I love sign language. I think it's such a cool thing. And it actually helped me focus on how I appear. If I was talking to you all like this the whole time, even though my speech is trying to be lighthearted, you're gonna get the sense that I'm just a grumpy guy. But I'm not talking that way. But all I did was change my eyebrows and my body language. <laughs> this matters for your admin because you might be frustrated about something but not aware of what you're doing. You gotta look at your subconscious and see what you accidentally do. So, be selective and careful on how you word things. In the end, all teachers and administration should be focused on caring for each student's overall growth. They should be, they care. All right, some of the issues where you say you have an admin that, does, that has issues, do they care about the student's growth? Or do they care about a check? That's something that you can actually see as, hey, wait a second, all right. Hey, I'm talking on this growth side because they may not realize how much they're down there too. They could be realizing they're so worried about a budget that they forgot why they do what they do too. They're human too. All right, unfortunately, this isn't always the case. This is where that sword comes into play. We as teachers think we have to be a shield. All right, oh, they're gonna fire us. We're the music, they're gonna cut our program, they're gonna cut our program. And some admin know that we're only a shield, so they know there's not gonna be a fight back. That's where you need to come into play. All right, we're in a teacher shortage right now. You have way more power than you think. And a lot of this, a lot of things that we're needing aren't a big deal to ask for, okay? We're not talking about paycheck raises. Well, let's be honest, we love it. it. We're talking about resources that we need. We're talking about connections to folks that we need. We're talking about, I have a student that is throwing drumsticks at me. I need support. The more solutions you provide, the less problems will happen. I've used this, I'm gonna go more, a little detail here. 
Um, if you want something to change, collaborate with those that also would be affected by whatever that change would be, then bring it up to the people that make the official change. For example, my elementary school, when I first got there, 15 minutes every grade for K through three, 15 minutes every day near the end of the day. Those of you that teach kindergarten in any form, do you think I can teach any lesson in 15 minutes? By golly, I tried. <laughs> I tried. But then we realized that, say, like, how do we make this better? We started doing things a little differently. And then I brought up, hey, wait a second, my band time's starting to get shorter here. I brought up a schedule. I talked to the PE teacher. I talked to the computers teacher. I talked to the library teacher. I talked to four, five, six. I talked to every single person with, hey, this is an idea of a schedule I wanted to bring up for our rotations this next, next year. You like it? It wasn't even discussion. It was like, oh yeah, check. They accidentally tried to change it again this last year. They go, oh yeah, we're using Mr. Bond's schedule. Doi, here you go. And suddenly I've got maximum time for band, maximum time for music. Yes, excellent. <laughs> I do get them for an hour and a half a day, or an hour and a half a week total. And I fought for that. This is what uh, Susan Walker fought for that. And Amanda Robertson fought for that, okay? It's important, we need that extra time. And it's easy to say why. So, be careful how you vent too. Gossip destroys everything you're building. Uh, this has been brought up several times, different things. Again, they all stole it for me. Copyright me, give me money. Um, it's easy to destroy. Uh, I love the show Letterkenny because honestly my town is a little bit like it, except without the drugs. <laughs> um, Bad gas travels fast in a small town. Love that quote, because here's the thing. Bad gas travels fast. It's easy to say, did you hear what happened? Mr. Bond got mad at those fleets. Travels, Mr. Bond's having a bad day. Mr. Bond's doing this, Mr. Bond's doing that. Suddenly gets to the parents. Mr. Bond, why are you threatening my student? Mr. Bond, why did you message my student after school? The year I graduated, a teacher got fired. A male teacher got fired because they messaged privately a student, a female student. Not anything bad, just to remind them about a rehearsal or something in that vein. Didn't matter that he was proved innocent. He got fired. He can't teach anymore. Damage is done. Gossip matters. You hear something bad about yourself, you correct that clear and quick, all right? Did you have something? Yeah, did you, um, like, because you teach K-12. Yeah. Right? And I teach K-12, and one of the biggest, my biggest issue in my school is the scheduling, where I do lose, like, 15 minutes off of my band time because I have an elementary class right before, and having to transition them back, but also keeping them to their time as well. Would you be willing to share with me your elementary my schedule rotation, how you approach that? Yes, I can send that to you, and I'll talk, I'll talk to everybody on that. Um, so one of the things I did for this rotation schedule to build it, I went through and nitpicked and nitpicked and nitpicked. It took me hours. I'll be honest, I took a lot of time out of my schedule to do this because I knew that if I put the effort now into it, I don't have to worry about it later. It's worth putting that time in. Um, I was going through in the way that it was just situated. Okay, the biggest thing is, in any of these rotation blocks, this is those elementary teachers' preps. And elementary teachers guard their preps with their lives. And you know what? Think about some of the like really rough days you might have some of those kids. They might have that all day. They earn their preps. I get it. So you've got to think that time for them can't change. But if that means you might need to wiggle some things around saying, hey, you'll still get your time, same thing. I'm just wanting to change the order of things. Or do you mind, could we do four, five, six first and then do the younger kids, something like that. Switching those times around, but talk to each of the teachers and saying, what would you want? What is the thing that you would need out of rotations? When I'm doing rotations, what do you need? Because then they feel like, oh, you care about what I'm saying. You're wanting to be collaborative. Even though secretly, you're trying to get what you need for your room. So that's what my, that would say what I was, talk to all of them and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. Maybe set up a mock schedule what you would like, and then say, tweak here and there. This is, could we change, okay, what do I need to change on this to make it right for you? Make, I, would, that's, I would love to see your, your schedule. Yeah. I had six ideas in the end, and then we, we voted on and I got the second one, which was the best one. <laughs> All right, so the title of the session, Hitchhiker's Guide to Life and Music. Those lists I made you start with 
They're important. I have a geek rep reference on purpose. Don't compromise your identity. I'm never gonna give up being a geek. I'm never gonna stop loving that show. I have done 10 different school projects on that movie, show, radio, broadcast, <laughs> novella. It is, I love, I love it. That's part of me. It's never gonna change. I'm not compromising that for somebody else. Music is natural in all of us. This is a passionate field, let's be honest. We have passion for what we do. We have passion for drive. Even if you don't have the emotion side, you know the immense history and connection that music brings. The way we can see the, a window of the culture that's going on during the time. The ideas. There's so much good in it. We all have that. But teacher, teaching requires many hats. We all know that. But have you ever examined the other aspects of your life the way you examine music? How do you teach? Well, let me examine this. What do I do in my free time? Do I actually let myself have free time? Do I give myself free time that's just for me to breathe? Or am I just taking my free time and using it to get myself to be a better teacher? And what I mean by that is like reading about different teaching techniques. They're great, but are you really breathing? No, you're still learning. You're still constantly pushing yourself. Some minds, you can do that. That's great. That's not mine. And I'm certain that there's, I'm not the only one in that boat. Jack of all trades and master of none. The rest of the quote though, but oftentimes better than master of one. All right? Especially as teachers, we have to be kind of a little bit of everything all of the time. Yes, Bo Burnham. Um, I actually think that's important to say. Like, yeah, we are masters of music, but it's important to be able to say, you know what? I notice the kid's going, like something's wrong. They're acting different. Being willing to say, hey, put on a mm, closest thing to parent, but not parent hat saying anything like anything you want to chat about because sometimes they're not going to be the ones that say this to anybody and then there's bottles and bottles like you're shaking up soda bottle and then instead of opening it or doing the tap method and i don't even say just opening it up someone takes a knife and eventually pokes it the wrong way and that explosion can lead to horrible changes in a young child's life let's be honest that small change affects their mind affects their psyche and then they're gonna see you, if they were the one that, that poked that, that bottle the wrong way, they're gonna see you as the problem for everything in their life. We are in an emotional field. Don't panic. Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. I have GAD. My life is panic. My head is a typhoon of sticky notes. And I tried to fight that current my whole life. I can't fight it. But I learned how to sit in the center. It's calm here. I can see what's going on. And you know what, not all days are the best. I've even had one time uh, this year that I said, students, no, I got too emotional there. I'm very sorry, that's my fault. I still held her, I didn't make the mistake, but I even apologized and I went directly to them in a one-on-one -on -one setting, said, you know, I just got emotional. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, uh, Dr. Tim said, you can't take, you know, you can't unfire the bullet. No, but you can at least be there to show that it was absolutely a mistake. Cry there with them help the stitching come back to show that it was absolutely an accident. Stop and take a breath, one step at a time. How do you eat an elephant? One, one, bite. one bite at a time. Take a moment, breathe. You got suddenly a bunch of things to juggle? Breathe. Good change and good habits take time and sometimes years, but it's worth the wait. Mine took three years finally started seeing blossoms. And suddenly, some of the naysayers that didn't like me became, whoa, that's what he's doing. I'm on board. But I took the patience, and don't get me wrong, I cried a lot. My wife knows she's been a great shoulder to cry on. The path of learning and growing is never ending. Enjoy the ride. You're always gonna learn something new. You're always gonna have, every year can be different, and that's okay. But find a way to enjoy the ride, because if you're not enjoying your life, then what's, this is gonna sound dark, what's the point of living it? Really, but that's the truth. So, like I said, mental health. Here's some tips, and some of these actually do help with specific anxiety disorders. So, set a time to not respond to any work-related emails, unless it's an emergency, because you know what, it does happen. Uh, I've had secretary call me at like 6 p.m. saying, I'm so sorry, we've got, trying to get a sub. Sub situation, okay, fine. 
but you know who those people are. You can read the email, you know, I've, oh, my phone's over there, good. We all have phones. And now we got our phones on our wrists. But the thing is, is that if we constantly respond, we're not actually giving ourselves that time. Students know if they try to message me past 5 p.m., I ain't gonna respond. Students know that if it's a weekend, I'm probably not gonna respond unless an emergency. I set that time myself. After work, do something lazy. And I say lazy on purpose. Lazy in sign language. Okay. Your face has to match it too. <laughs> Taking a full. One thing you can do so, but thinking about your face, I want you to relax your, your forehead, relax your eyes, relax your jaw. You might feel weird pressures in one of those spots. You're like, oh my gosh. I'm that tense. You may not realize it. I actually have said I've done before where I've sit, I kind of like will sit down, I'm like at my desk so students can't see, and I'm looking like this. I had one of my younger students go like, Mr. Bond, why are you a zombie? <laughs> I say, that's just how I relax, you try. And I actually show them, and then suddenly they learn how to de-stress a bit too. They're like, and it's funny, because he was like, you know, he's just, he always emotes everything he does. He's like, whoa, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try to scare people with that. <laughs> Now, exercise can be good. I'm not saying avoid exercise. Like I said, I am very successful. And sometimes I avoid exercise. But the thing is, is that exercise is a stress on your body. Even if you have, and you're doing this, it's still a stress. So if it's immediate, like, all right, gotta work, boom, exercise, that's not you time. That could be building yourself up. Sometimes there's some people that like that. But it may not be a distressor for you. It actually might not let you settle, all right? What I recommend, like 10, 20 minutes. You actually don't need a ton of time, but just enough. I recommend watch a TV show. My wife's obsessed with Friends. We love Brooklyn Nine-Nine, we watch that together. Um, nailed it, if you haven't seen that, it's, uh, it's a cooking contest for people who shouldn't be cooking. <laughs> Fantastic. But it's, it's hilarious, and everyone's having fun. It's something that makes me go, oh, and lets my mind turn off for a second. I'm not thinking about Oh, I've got to still pick out Christmas music. And I've got to make sure I rewrite that part for Jimmy because Jimmy still plays two notes. I'm not thinking about, oh my gosh, Fanny and Franny were so mad about the way their names are spelled and they're getting mad at each other about it. I'm just thinking about, <laughs> funny cake fall down. <laughs> I'm thinking about nothing else, blank. Meditative states, this is like a meditation thing, but it's actually something, it's a mindset that helps you just stop, reboot. All right, here we go. It also helps you make clear, clear decisions. This is also, this is the worst advice, and, but it, the thing is, is how common is it? You know what? It's been a stressful day. Take it, get a beer, go home, rest. Why is alcohol in the mix? Why, you know, it builds the joke that teachers are alcoholics because we give that advice to ourselves constantly. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not go to a negative source for any of that, guys. But it's easy to do, especially in this very stressful first year teaching. Woo! Makes you want to. If you know you're compromised mentally, do not. Don't even touch anything. Try a different way. Repetitive motion objects can actually help. Something that's repetitive. Yo-yo, I have always been obsessed with yo-yos because every year for Christmas, my parents would get me a yo-yo, just a cheap one for stocking stuffers. But the yo-yo act, back and forth, repetitive, something I could do, I can't do any tricks, but that act, doing it again and again, is actually a little bit mesmerizing and it helps me relax. And that's two bucks, it's worth two bucks. Pick an important person in your life and schedule a time. Physically write it down in your calendar, in your daily life. Pick a time to say, I need to make sure I rela this relationship matters. But the cool thing about this is that it's sometimes a good way to vent because it's someone that's important to you. They have this connection for you, all right? I've got, my pastor is also one of my closest friends. He's one of the reasons I moved to Montana. And him and I like have known each other since I was in sixth grade. And so I've seen him grow and I've seen, he's seen me grow. We help each other out so much. We're also part of a deep dive podcast, if you're ever curious. <laughs> Think back to your list. Look at your list in your top three. 
What currently do you think is actually your top three? What are you giving yourself as top three? Are they on that list? Or is it something else? People like to say, no, money is not my most number one thing. But maybe it's something that's been on my head a lot. I just had a child. You know how expensive they are? And I'm not even talking about the food he's about to eat. Money is an often one we're always taught. Money is not the source of things. But you know, it might be on our heads and we need to be aware of it. You need to be aware. doesn't mean that you need to be. It's something that's been 10 things in your life that you feel are the most important to you. Mm -hmm. Then circle your top three. No particular orders. If you are not living your life to those three points, you need to change something. Not your admin. You. It's your life. Take charge of it. All right? Live to your aspirations. You want to do this? Great. Be the person that steps up and says, let's do it. All right? Caring for your desires in life is vital to be a successful human being. It matters. It matters all the way. Having those boundaries, yes. Talking to your admin, building those communities, yes. Caring about yourself, yes. Because if you can't care for yourself, how can you teach your kids to care for themselves? Your thriving will reach the students. The students might see you struggle, but then fight through it. What a great lesson. They know how to thrive in life. It's not just about surviving. That's not what the point of life is. You can thrive in it. And it's not, and like we're taught, don't, money's not a thing. You can have great thriving without money. Montana, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous everywhere. Find ways to just enjoy the peace. And if you're saying, well, there's nothing near me, I'm in the plains. Look at nighttime. Holy fright, even in my house, if I've got a late night where I'm helping out with pep band, sometimes I look up at the end and even though there's lights in town, I can see such a crystal clear sky at night. Oh, the peace I feel in that, the, the wonder, the awe, the majesty. Not saying ignore work. You do need to show you care in your career. I'm not saying again, fight for laziness tomorrow. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you need to show care, you, it's important. But what I'm saying is, is that having this, this is what actually that balance is about. You need to put some coins on that other side of the thing. You need to put some coins on that life passion, <coughs> all right? Most of the changes you'll need to make, it's more of how you handle your free time and your extracurricular events, all right? All of those things, that's really where it comes down to. And most of the stuff in the school day, with exception of rotation things, which that's, that's where I say that's where you have to communicate, most of this is that time. And taking that time for yourself to be yourself so that you may show the best way to live life to your students. And I hope that's part of every single person's in curriculum. That and a passion for learning. New teachers, I've said this before, you are pushing a bus at a dead stop. And I say a bus because it's heavy, it's thick. It's, in the words the kids use, dummy thick. <laughs> you are pushing this bus without gas, all of us teachers are either pushing or we learn, you know what, this is a great year, I'm driving. But we also know, I remember what it was like to push that. I'm gonna have backup gas in my, my bus. I learn how to say, all right, you know what, some years are bad, that's okay. I'm not gonna let myself push the bus again though. That first year you learn the ropes, you learn how that bus works. My dad loves that analogy, and it really wasn't until after my first two years that I understood it. Two questions. Here's the thing. Two questions for you. When you die, go to the pearly gates, or not so pearly gates, whatever you think. <laughs> there will be two questions that are asked of you. I'm not for sure which who philosopher said this or anything. One, have you found joy in your life? Has your life brought joy to others? As musicians, <laughs> number two is easy. A lot of people, that's not the case. But because we have number two easy, did we get the first question? Seek joy and find that in your life. If you have questions, venting, come see me, come talk to me. I promise you, I have heard everything. I've had a student cuss me out in front of a superintendent 
and the superintendent just said, oh, they're just having a hard day. Didn't punish them. I've had, I, I've had a lot. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. Oh, believe me, I'm not. But I'm loving what I do. And I love to help because I don't want the other things of your life to ruin what is such a phenomenally, chaotically fun career. This is my top list of 10 if you're curious. Um, that's my email up there. Last thing is a quote. Uh, my dad's also gone through a very interesting path in life. Um, every sunrise is a new chance to start and, re and restart. Breathe, you know what, some days, uh, that day's gone. But the next day, new round. Here we go. Thank you, you've been a great audience. I hope I've helped you in some way.